Hi, thanks for visiting our website. Uh, I want to share with you seven things that every child needs. Uh, and this is uh, something that I learned uh, a number of years back from another minister, but it's, uh, it's really helped me out. It's something that I teach pretty often, and, uh, and it really helps in, in uh, child raising and it helps in relationships. Um, every child is basically born with seven uh, needs, and uh, we could think of it as being born with an empty tank. And we come into this world with an empty tank, and the people that we look to, f to look to to fill that tank is our, our father and our mother. And, uh, and there's these things that just need to be poured into a little child because they come kind of like an empty tank or like a blank slate, you could say. And if you pour these things into a child, uh, they're going to feel loved. They're going to grow up healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy. And uh, if, you, if we don't give these things to a child, they're going to have an empty tank. They're going to go, when they get old enough, grow up a little bit, they're going to go looking for these things somewhere else. And they may not find the real thing. They may find uh, something artificial, uh, but uh, they're going to go looking for it. And you don't want them to do that. So here's what every child really needs to grow up emotionally healthy. Uh, first of all is unconditional love. Uh, the Bible says in 1 John 4.19 that we love God because he first loved us. And that's a model of unconditional love. Uh, God doesn't expect us, just command us to love him uh, without, any, uh, without any reserves or without him pouring love into us first. And that's literally what happens when, when we accept Jesus, we become children of God, and God begins to pour his love into us first. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. We're not working for it. Uh, we don't have to qualify for it. God just loves us, and he begins to pour love into us. And out of that love filling us, we begin to love God in return, we begin to then love ourselves and other people, and, uh, and this is called unconditional love. Uh, we make mistakes and God does not withdraw his love. Sometimes we make the same mistakes over and over and God does not withdraw his love. This is called unconditional love. And so uh, children are born with a need for unconditional love and you are the one, if you're the mother or the father, you're the one to fill that tank and you pour unconditional love into them, let them know that they're cared for, that they're, that they're cherished. And uh, uh, really when a baby comes into this world, he needs to be picked up and looked at by somebody who thinks, wow, you are the most beautiful thing I've ever laid eyes on. And the unconditional love starts that day. And, uh, and God puts something in the hearts of mothers and fathers that's really willing uh, for somebody who's really emotionally healthy and mature that they'd be willing to die for that child. It's, it's unconditional love. We pour it into our children from the day they're born. We don't make them work for the love. We don't make them qualify for the love. We don't say, I'll love you if you do this better, if you do this right, if you stop doing that. We just love them. Uh, the next thing that a, a child needs is value as a person. They need to know that we value them, that, uh, that uh, their thoughts are, are valuable, their opinions are valuable. Yes, we're teaching them. Yes, we're training them. Yes, we're the parents. But their, their thoughts are valuable. Their opinions are valuable. Um, who they are as a person has value, and we have to communicate that to them, that they are worth our time, they are worth our attention, they're worth our love. Uh, the third thing that a, that a child needs from us is acceptance uh, for who they are. And uh, that can mean a lot of things. A child may be, one child may be very artistic, another child may be very athletic, another child may be very um, intelligent uh, and do awesome in school, another child may, may just like to fix things or, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different uh, personalities, different gifts, uh, different skills that, that kids are born with. And it's just uh, uh, gifts that are given by God. And so the child needs to know that we accept them for who they are, for the, for the personality, the gifts they have, uh, for the things that they like and their interests, and feel that they're accepted. They don't have to change in order to be accepted. They don't have to be something else or someone else in order to have our approval and have our acceptance. Uh, the fourth thing that a child needs, really desperately needs, is a sense of security and protection. Um, a child really has no defenses. They're, uh, they're, they're helpless, they're defenseless when they come into the world, and they're that way for a long time, for many years to come. And they need to feel that they are secure and that they are protected. When something scary happens, a child, uh, their world falls apart. They, you know, that's why they cry, they scream, they panic. They run to mom or dad. They want to be picked up. They want to be hugged. They want to feel protected. They want to feel that those big arms are around them and they're okay. And here's the thing. If a child feels secure and protected, uh, especially in their own home, and in their, in their nuclear family relationships, then what they do is they internalize that sense of safety and protection. And so when they grow up and they go out into the world, they carry that with them. They feel safe, they feel strong, they feel protected, they feel that they can take on the world, and the world is not a big, great big scary threat all around them. 
But uh, if a child doesn't feel safe and doesn't feel protected uh, in their own home and in their own family, they don't internalize that. And then what happens is actually they never feel safe anywhere. Uh, they grow up with a lot of anxieties, a lot of insecurities, a lot of fears, um, phobias, and uh, they, they simply don't feel secure in the world. They don't feel able to take on the world. And so we're the ones that are able to give them that sense of being protected and, and safe. Uh, another thing uh, that all children need is affirmation for their accomplishments, or another way of saying that is praise for their accomplishments. And uh, that begins when a little child, a little toddler, comes running up to you and they have painted uh, uh, or colored a, a picture from their coloring book and maybe it's a tree and they colored the tree bright orange and all outside the lines and they say look what I did and uh, maybe it's not you know ready to sell at the art show but what they're showing you is uh, they, they really want approval it's not about that little picture of the orange tree it's about look what I did and maybe look what I did for you and so they're they're offering that to you and they're looking for a little bit of praise and so if you say all oh, the wrong color and you color it outside the lines and you know and you you give that kind of response um, they actually feel rejected personally um, yeah we can teach them how to color correctly but but the fact is right there they're offering you their heart not not really the picture and so we begin to uh, uh, understand the fact that what they do they're actually looking for aff affirmation for who they are as a person for their value and uh, that type of thing for their accomplishments. And so, yes, we can shape them and teach them and train them, but, uh, but they do need to be praised and affirmed for their accomplishments. And uh, another thing that every child needs is forgiveness for mistakes. Everybody needs this. We all make mistakes. It's just part of who we are. We're human. We spill the milk. We say the wrong thing. We trip. We break something. We all make mistakes. And when our mistakes are, are kind of held over our head and we're reminded of them over and over, what, uh, what that really is is a form of rejection, saying now you're, there's something wrong with you. I reject you because you don't perform right. You don't measure up. Uh, but when we say, hey, you know what? I forgive you. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Uh, we'll clean up the milk. We'll, we'll repair that or we'll buy a new one. Uh, we all make mistakes and I forgive you. When you say to a child, I forgive you, and then you let it go, what you're actually doing is saying, uh, you have value to me. I don't want to break this relationship because you spilled the milk um, or you, you got a bad grade in school. I don't want to break this relationship. Um, you still have value to me. I forgive that. Uh, let's, work on, let's work on this. But uh, uh, it's, uh, if you don't forgive them, it's really a form of rejection, and they know that and they feel that. Uh, and then finally, the, uh, the last thing that a child needs is motivation uh, to reach their potential. They need somebody to say, I believe in you. You know, you can, you can fulfill your dream, whatever your dream is, whatever that desire is that's forming inside of you as you grow up. I believe in you and I'm going to support you and you can do that. And when, when we put those seven things together um, and give those to your child as he or she is growing up, what you're really doing is filling their tank so that as they become an adult, they're really, um, their tank is filled and they're equipped for life. They have a foundation for success. They believe in themselves. They feel safe. They feel competent. They feel confident. And uh, they know they're cared for and they're emotionally healthy. And you've filled their tank and they're ready for life. So uh, I hope that, that uh, helps you. I hope you can use that in your family. God bless you. Thank you.